This is my favorite model bit right now. These little robot legs. They come from a 6mm scale model by the Lazy Forger that looks like this. But let's put some on a toy car. Why not? This is a Hot Wheels Volkswagen Beetle. Let's crack it open. I like to drill out the posts in two stages. First, I use around a three millimeter bit to drill down into the center. Then I switch to a larger bit around four millimeters to just shear off the outside of the rivet. This is what you're looking for. Let the drill do the work, no need to push it. With the rivet heads gone, it should open right up. Who needs wheels? Although, if you do need wheels, you can reuse these little tabs if you pop the axles out. Just squeeze them back into place. Nothing fancy inside this one. I removed the chrome from the plastic base with bleach and stripped the paint with an automotive paint stripper. Right, we need to attach these legs and it is really simple. I just use a round rasp to make an indentation in line with the axle. This will allow for a strong glue bond. A two millimeter styrene rod fits inside the barrel of this leg perfectly and it'll fill out some of the wheel well space. You could add springs or other details if you want, but I'm keeping it simple. The fourth leg position is pretty important to get the balance right. Make sure you're working on a flat surface. I want the one leg in the front to be hanging in mid-step, so I chose the pose and glue the last leg into place. Once it's there, I add a bit of baking soda to strengthen the joint and fill the gap with a two millimeter styrene rod. I decided to go ahead and drill and tap the posts on this one just to give it a nicer finish, but just gluing works fine in the end too. I ditched the clear plastic, but as you can hear, that means we need to make up the gap, and you can see right around here in the interior. A short segment of one millimeter styrene square rod should do the trick. Sanding mesh windscreen is a must for this build. I axed out a headlight with some cardstock and I added a cylinder greebly in the other. Both of these mean I had to cut off the original headlights from the plastic base. And then I moved on to the rest of the window details. I carved down some styrene to plug up the passenger side window and glued it in place. I had an extra energy weapon laying around so I added that to the panel. The driver's side windows got a simple armor strip, and a slightly different armor accent went into the final rear window. With all the parts built, I gave everything a coat of black primer. 
I've recently been really enjoying this Mr. Finisher surfacer. It's nice and matte. The base coat for the lower half of the car is just going to be a silver dry brush. And I sprayed the body of the car green with my airbrush. I was thinking about doing a two-tone paint job, but something I ordered just came in the mail. These are brand new decals made by Sabi Hobby on Facebook, and they're really unique. There's a little bit of everything here. Tashi power converters, even something for Dominique. If you're interested in getting some of these, follow the link that I'll put in the description. I'm using these speedy snails today. They seem like they'll fit on the doors. For water, I like using purified contact water. It's cheap, clean, and neutral. After trimming the decals down to a minimal size, I decided to try out this decal softener I just bought. So I started by applying some to the area the decal will go, and then quickly realized that was a mistake. You must have to clear coat these first or something. Can you tell I don't know how to use decals? I've actually been avoiding them for a long time, but I forced myself to try them out by buying these new cool sets. I did find that with enough water I was able to slide them around into place even more than I expected, and once they're dry they stay stuck pretty well. I hit all the armor and the gun with a dark black brown base color, and I'll give all that a coat of matte varnish to seal everything in before moving on to weathering. Back to the legs. I dry brushed a bit of bronze over the silver and then decided to make a creamy peachy orange kind of color. I didn't want anything too bright that would clash with the green. Even with mixing in an opaque white, it was hard to get good coverage over the dark bronze and silver. I didn't even realize until after painting all the legs that the color matched the decal perfectly. With the orange done after two or three coats, I grabbed my Tamiya panel liner and hit all the remaining silver mechanical bits. After panel lining, I dirtied them up with weathering powders. This is the perfect effect for some machinery. For weathering the body, I want to use some brown tones, but I don't want them to overpower the green or the decal, so I use transparent colors over opaque ones. Slather it on, wipe it off, and repeat. Then I can take a small nail art brush and go in with more opaque grime for specific details, thinking about where the yuck would get stuck. All that's left to do now is finish up with the energy weapon, so I paint bright white in the recesses and spray very lightly with the airbrush using a viridian and blue mixture. I give the sub-assemblies all one more once over, put the build together, and tighten it all up with those satisfying tapped mini screws. Some people already saw this guy on my Instagram, but I originally made this black beetle with yellow legs, and it was too fun not to make another. The legs add so much character to an otherwise simple toy car. If you modify diecast cars, I really recommend you try out building a walker. Instead of the regular wheel swap, use some legs. 
I'd like to thank my awesome supporters on Patreon for helping me do what I do. You guys are the best. Go create something and I'll see you on the next build.